<laughs> All right, welcome to Lady Legion. I'm your host, Bethany. I think my computer is cell phone and I keep trying to touch the screen. <laughs> this is Josia Elliott. This is Rebecca Robertson, or Rebecca Lee Robertson. And we're really just girl chatting today, and we've already had a really fun chat. So I guess we're just going to continue, and you guys are along for the ride. Sweet. So perfect. We were just discussing holiday fights, <laughs> holiday drinking, dry January. Josia here is in amidst a dry January. That's why she doesn't have a... Oh, she does, though. There, yeah. There's water in here. Water. Not in here. We're, we're toasting wine to our first <laughs> Lady Liege. Um, you're having fun, though, Mike, right? You're drinking. Oh, and oh, oh. If, if drinking constitutes uh, fun having in life. Fun. <laughs> you're having fun. No, I don't, I don't drink as much anymore. I, I have to dilute. I told you I have to dilute my wine. Oh, I, it's, I can no longer drink a normal. Yeah. Wait, what do you dilute with? Well, you can do a spritzer if you want to do <laughs> soda water, okay. or La Croix. Is that how you say that? I never know. La Croix. La Croix. I'm like the white trash version. Mm-hmm. So I'm like La Croix. La Croix. Pour some La Croix. Put some ice cubes in that La, wine. La Croix. Um, okay, so you're talking like the sweet white wines with La Croix. I'm talking. I have to dilute everything. But when I first met Becca, we bonded for a split second. This was however many years ago now. Yeah. Four, yeah. probably years ago. We bonded over the fact that we both have a deep-seated appreciation for Diane Keaton. And Diane Keaton's uh, beverage of choice is red wine on ice, right? Mm-hmm. Red it's wine. It's called a Diane Keaton. You probably knew that from your bartending years. No. No. I feel the like Keaton. because I'm so narrow-minded when it comes to wine, I'd mm-hmm. be like, it must, like, I'm kind of snobby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think if anyone did say the I was like, <gasps> Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, you're I not alone. I think most, loves. most people feel that way. Um, <laughs> but if you live in I Orange County, when Your, like, go-to drink for Orange County Housewives is white wine on ice. Yeah, that's what I was like. I was like, I can see somebody being like, Moscato. Oh, for yeah. sure. It's, but, like, red wine? Yeah. The new ones. It's kind of fun. <laughs> I it's like fun. This. And then she came out with the wine. Like, because this, co- she did, like, an interview or something. It might have been on at Ellen. I don't remember. But where they had... Uh, red wine with ice cubes in it and it caught on so fast that she's like, well, I guess I gotta make a wine now. And so now she has her I own wine. I don't know if it went, if it's still in business. I don't know what the deal with it is. And but that's at one what it's point, like to be rich. Yeah. yeah. And but you famous. know what? I think I'm just gonna make a, make a wine. Like, oh, I like ice. I should naturally start my own wine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and people are like, get that Diane Keaton bottle. Hold that yep. towel. Like, yep. It says like, yeah. cha-ching, cha-ching. It says like the Keaton or something on the wine bottle. It's pretty, pretty dope. Like, like adding ice to a drink is this legendary thing that pushes you into being a business mogul. <laughs> also, your stylistic choices are... She oh, is no. on fleek all yep, the time. all the time. Whenever I wear a turtleneck, I'm like slowly suffocating inside, but on the exterior, I just feel like... Wear a good oh, hat. i so keen. Yeah. <laughs> it's a goal in life to be. I know. To be that way. In a full skirt, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but then also when I wear, like, suspenders and trousers and then... She can... Anyhow. She has an ability to, like, gender straddle. Yes. Mm-hmm. She can do, like... Yes. I can look, like, masculine chic. Oh, my God. I've got the full skirt totally. on. Like, mm-hmm. I love it. Totally. I know. I love her appreciation for full skirts. I don't feel like there's a ton... Like, for her, that's just her standard look. She is not right. trying to succumb to any trends. Right. I love that. Always black and white, like, it's monochromatic. Yeah, it's black the best. Gray. It's the best. Occasionally red, maybe. Maybe. But, like, accessories. Mm-hmm. <sighs> All things I love. Oh, she's, she's the best. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to start rocking a full skirt. I know. I love a full skirt. I feel so swingy. You have like a silver one, I think. That's. I have a lot of full skirts. Yeah. Yeah. I like pencil skirts too. The only skirt I don't love, I have a few, but I don't really love like boho floor length skirts. They're just like not my style. Mm -hmm. Like I'll own them because I appreciate them and I see them on other people and I think. What's the difference between. Oh, you're so like. Like a max. You're so ethereal. Is yeah, that, like, what's a max. The like a max. Like a full situation. skirt and a boho flow skirt. Full, well, to me, a full skirt is actually like tulle or something under it, like a, a full body. Kind of like is a. Kind of think like of the, like a 50s kind of like apron. A folded kind of yes. long and bohemian. Yeah, but you're thinking more T length. To me, a full skirt is anywhere from like T to 
I don't know. Past somewhere in this range. I have no personal style anymore. So like I wish I owned any skirts really <laughs> <laughs> or anything that's trendy. I have so I've many skirts. 100% put that on the back burner and I feel like that's something I love about you. It's like you're very style conscious and not even style conscious, not even trend wise, just like what you, your personal style. Oh, thank you. Every time I see you, it's like, you're just, that's. Sometimes it bites me in the, in the tush because I look back at pictures of me and was like, what am I wearing? <laughs> like I'm so, I so am into your personal, my style. personal yeah. what I feel that day. But I look back at some pictures and I'm just like, Holy oh, smokes. I have like 20 right? pounds no, yeah. on, two different earrings, a headband, like some sequins. Like it's I have so much going yeah, on. Yeah, that's the best. I don't it's know. Like, I'll show you some pictures you guys might be like. It means you're taking oh. risks. And then, I don't know, you look back at Gwen risks. and like some of her outfits, it's like, okay, that was a miss. But hmm. then you see her incorporate, like I've seen her wear all shades of flannel. Mm-hmm. And then you see her incorporate them all. That's Charity, she, my sister. Yeah. Charity will wear like three different plaids at once consecutively all the time. It's like her thing. Their engagement photos. Well, she's a stepmommy now, so it was her and Aaron and their son Hunter, and they were all wearing plaid. And Charity had like two plaids on, and it sounds like an eyesore, like look away, like dog seizure too much. Yeah. But it was so cool. They're really outdoorsy too, and they live in Washington, out in the. Yeah, it works. Yeah. I. What is your personal style? Would you say? Um, like, do you work I, work clothes? Are they different then? Are they the same? I mean, I always have an edge to mm-hmm. me. Uh, yeah. I think that there's, like, got to have something pop. Like, it's usually, like, a bright primary mm-hmm. color. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just going to say, I feel like you're really good with primary colors. Yeah, well, Remember those yellow kind of, like, Pac-Man glasses you had forever? <laughs> what, I don't know what those are, them? but they sound tight. <laughs> they, like, <laughs> they had pixels on them, and it was, like, Ooh. they were... Sunnies. Yeah. They were fun. Sunnies, but like very um, Tetris looking frame. Oh, okay. And when people saw them, like they would make other people happy. Like people yeah, would go out of their way mean. to be like, those are cool. And I'm like, thank you. Because you know when someone makes yeah. a choice where like you know that it's a statement. Yep. And someone, I love a girl that wears bright yellow. I got a, a bright yellow. Um, it was in Portland. I was up there thrift shopping. And I was like, what do I need? It was like therapy. I was having a rough time. Like my dad had cancer and I was like, well, I need to go shopping. <laughs> I was like up there. Yeah. And as I like, I see like everyone's bright, therapy. Yeah. I like see this bright yellow coat. I'm like, oh, thank you. And your pretty eyelash. <laughs> I'm like, how much is it? And I pull it out and it's like, I'm like, it's going to be like $500. I just know. And they're like on sale, like $35. I'm like mine. And yeah. I just buy it and it like cuts here. So it goes right under the boobs. Love it. Which, and you're busty. So I'm busty. Normally, like, so it probably goes down to here on everybody else. Sure. But it was, like, perfect fit, staples, long, puffs up here. Nice. So just 80 is enough. To ask. Oh, I love this. Did you ever get that dress? Never. I, ah, never I have to tell you about this dress. So there's this thrift shop that's my personal favorite. And I I thrift pretty hard. Like I would, I would personally pause. We had a pause for that. <laughs> yeah. I that would in. personally rather have like an amazing gem treasure that's vintage or really original or cool than like something name brand and like what's on trend. Oh, totally. Just me personally. Totally. There's a lot of people that don't like care about vintage and don't care about. Anyways, there was this dress that. There was actually two. I had some event that I was going to that was, was 80s, an 80s and something. I can't even remember. What it was like a prom. No, it wasn't a prom. An 80s cocktail yeah, party? I guess. I honestly don't remember. But it was vague 80s, though. Like, you could have done anything. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, it was a, sorry. It was a bachelorette. It was a bachelorette. Oh, that's what it was. Oh, that's fun. It was decade bachelorette. Well, anyways, there was these two dresses at this thrift shop on Vermont. One of them was, they're both leather mini dresses okay so oh, one of them awesome. sweetheart top strapless mini dress but um it was blue one of them was blue wasn't it this the one that's strapless mm-hmm. was like light fuchsia does that make sense that that shade of fuchsia leather that's like lighter than a mm-hmm. bold fuchsia so it's very barbie doll like very 80s barbie doll i see it and um yeah, it's extraordinary. And then there was another one that was royal blue mm-hmm. leather, but it had two textures of leather. It had, like, ostrich up here, and it had a big keyhole cutout in the chest, like cool. sweetheart, and then it had, like, some 
kind of tea. I don't know how to describe it. Like a cap sleeve collared thing with a like off the shoulder. No, like the shoulders covered and then a keyhole in the chest. Oh, okay. I love it. And it was, it was like reg- regular leather, which probably would be conflicting for you since you don't wear animal products. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> by the way, will you wear vintage leather, either of you? Um, or furs? I will never wear fur. Um, yeah. Ever, ever, ever. Never will I ever. I only ask because Lily... Mm-hmm. Um, well, Lily's not vegan, though, but she's, like, pescatarian. But she tries not to buy a lot of animal products, but she was wearing this fur. And I'm even a carnivore, and I feel weird wearing fur. Exactly. Like, I feel like, ooh, somebody's... Especially because the animals that you wear fur are not... No one ate them. No, they were specific. Like, their body wasn't used and consumed, so that bothers me, kind of. I just am like, yeah, no, you really just kill them for their skin? Like, that's hardcore, dog. Yeah. But anyway, she was like, oh, but it's vintage. And I'm like, wait, why does that matter? <laughs> it's how you treat I didn't yourself. ask because I just want to respect her perspective on it. Right. And I've heard that before, though. Oh, oh Lisa Silverstone, so because she, she's like hardcore vegan lifestyle, but mm. she has a couple pairs of vintage leather boots. Ah. Okay, with that, um, I... have been vintage. I'm like, wait, why I've been given it? gifts before. Like, people have bought me vintage something or another. Like, a friend got me a vintage bag, and I know it's made of leather. And I feel like I... And this was probably eight years ago. And I kept the bag, you know, and I didn't be like, no. Mm-hmm. I didn't... But it was because it was already... Nothing died direct. Like, it wasn't yeah. a new death. It was... This is already in in the store. Yeah. It's, it's been passed around in the 50s, whatever it is. And so I felt like that justified it to me accepting the gift. You know, I, I don't think she would have understood, like, if I would have been like, I think the, I don't know. the, I could be totally wrong. The theory behind that is, like, you're not um, promoting the industry, yes. right? So oh, if you're okay. buying new animal product, new yes. leather shoes, new, you're essentially saying like, yes, do more of this thing, yes. right? Okay. Like, yes, I'm supply and demand, right? I'm demanding this. You're going to go supply more of it. But if it's vintage, that doesn't necessarily apply. I don't own any vintage leather yeah, or vintage fur uh, simply because I don't really like animal, yeah. I don't so, do animal products, yeah, but, but I think that. that's the theory. I read her article because I was just interested in it. Uh, one of my best friends, Randy, is vegan as well. Very devout. Like, doesn't want butter or mm-hmm. anywhere in her life. Like, she's really strict about it, which is amazing. Um, anyways, I was like, I'm just very intrigued by vegan commitment. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm a straight up T-Rex and I was <laughs> raised by rednecks mm-hmm. that eat animals so anyways um so I read her article and she basically was saying that she's okay with wearing old leather particular though she'll wear like shoes but she would never carry a bag and she would never wear a coat Hmm. and she did say it's better for us to buy something old and recycle because then it's not going in a landfill mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so in her mind she's more comfortable sure. buying something thrifted that's sure. that was leather that's interesting i always think what is the animal like i have a cowhide rug mm-hmm. that was a real cow but my mindset is it's living on in my house and somebody ate him so i feel better about it mm-hmm. like his whole body was used that's just my perspective i'm sure you don't agree with that. <laughs> um, but I'm okay with that. If it was like mink. My I, grandma got me a mink coat. Mm-hmm. And I'm vegan. And she knows it. And she's like, I've got you this amazing vintage coat. And oh my like, gosh. And she like busts out this mink coat. And I'm like, oh my God. I was like, it's hideous. And she's like, oh, well, you, you don't like it. And she like is trying to sell it on me. They like push it on me. Do you think she didn't make the correlation between like food and all animal products? I think. Like that's possible, right? Grandma's not too bright. Like there's not a lot going on upstairs with Grandma Dunn. Uh-huh. <laughs> like she really misses a lot so, of. But she's not bright. So she's dimmed with age. Maybe she's a bit. <laughs> not that old. She's only 15 years older than my mom. <laughs> so it's okay. kind of just. We're going to find an excuse for her before <laughs> this is over. I mean, I still think you're both of your families are cooler than mine. Like that, I mean, not to say that mink, 
Mink is cool, but like getting vintage stuff. My family one year got me two of the same shower radios that were sh- <laughs> that were shaped like a fish. Like it's the same exact. <laughs> I am dead serious. Like worst gift givers. My family two shower, shower radios. radios. Shower yes. radios. I hope you have two showers. Do you have two bathrooms? I know. I was like, I just <laughs> was beyond. And my birthday is December twenty third. So. I think one was might have been for a birthday and one might have been for Christmas. But either way, like it was like a two for one deal. They forgot that they just gave you a fish. It was like an aunt gave me one and then like my mom gave me. Oh it was like God. they they didn't talk about it, but apparently I exude like please give fish me radio. fish shaped shower radios. Shower radio. Like that's what's missing from my life right now. It's like as if having a birthday near Christmas wasn't bad enough. The gifts are awful. And they're like, I you know, I'm going to wrap your birthday present with Santa paper, and also I didn't get you a Christmas present because I got you a birthday present, which Are is fine. Born, I'm are not... born around December? December 23rd. Now, is that... A th- I need to know. Do yes. people often be like, okay, we're going to bundle up, and you get the, either a Christmas present or a present? 100%. 100%. I'm not, that's not to say every family is like that. <laughs> that's just no, to say the shower radio think, family is I that think. one. <laughs> <laughs> Two days later, another fish. Another. The, it, it wasn't even like similar. It was the exact <laughs> same thing. Maybe they thought you'd be mixing in there. It's like, I'm going to play some of this. I'm like a DJ. Like, I was some. DJing with my <laughs> two fish shower radios. <laughs> I wish I was that cool. I didn't even do that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> my family appreciates vintage. I personally. I, I wish mine did. I was just raised like that. Yeah. Though, which I actually really love about my family. I like my that My family's too. very into history and um, just like what's old is cooler than what's new. Mm-hmm. In general. Mm-hmm. I'd say in all ways. Furniture, jewelry, whatever. So I just grew up in a house full of antiques. So there didn't have a lot of like name brand stuff then? I mean, yeah, we had name brand stuff too, but only if it was something we were truly into. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't have like a great example. Like in high school, I wore Doc Martens all the time. Right, right, right. Sure. But I also had like tons of vintage dresses. Yeah. Like when I, I was nominated for you know a queen thing, Mm -hmm. and I bought a vintage fifties prom dress, right? Full skirt, speaking of full skirts, and I still have it. Oh, I wore it to that tea party. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was amazing. We had a um. The League of Extraordinary Gentlewomen's mm-hmm. Club. We really have only congregated once like for once amazing or twice, maybe. tea party. <laughs> Mostly just for the social media pictures. Let's be real. We dressed up and had a really fancy tea party, and I wore it. Anyways. That's awesome. So, yeah. I, yeah, I, for, like, my homecoming prom, that sort of thing, I didn't ever do that. I never did vintage stuff. I was never, it was never part of my family or my lifestyle to do vintage things, which I'm really bummed about. Like, mm-hmm. it... Not that I was named right, I've never owned, like, a label or yeah. anything like that, but I wish I had some sort of, like, tra- not tradition, but kind of, where it's, like, you go vintage shopping to get, yeah. you know, I never did that, so it's, like, you go to whatever Dillard's or... You and I, yeah. we're gonna go together. I know, it's, like, you go to Dillard's and get your prom dress or wherever it is. Right. The rich people go to boutiques well, and I, did I that to too. JCPenney. I did that, too, though. We had a, my family, my aunts were buyers for Nordstrom's oh. when it came up. Oh, yeah. cool. So, kind of an interesting relationship with fashion because they decide what's, you know, they go to the runways yeah. and Aunt Kathy be in Milan, like, getting this. And I get, like, this box of free shit. <laughs> like, yeah. So, it's, like, this purse right off the runway. And, you know, amazing. And then I get, like... You know, Too Faced when it first came out, like all these right. brands, and I get Lancome, so all these cool makeups. So I would get a lot of cool things, and it gave me kind of an obsession. And my mom would teach me about the brands. Mm-hmm. She's like, okay, so then like she could spot a Kate Spade bag anywhere yeah. we were. But there was also she was a power shopper, and that we would go to thrift stores, and she'd be able to find high quality things like mm-hmm. a little. Um, I don't want to use this term because it's not a nice term, but like it was like a fashion truffle pig. <laughs> you know? Like she'd just be able to snort out like mm-hmm. every deal, like, mm-hmm. and that was that. cool. We'd just go on these marathon shopping trips. Yeah, see, I love that. I never, I never did any of that. I feel like I was a very lone wolf. I was very, like, into not super into sports, but like into my hobbies, and none of them were fashion related or beauty related and I wish they were. Like, what were your hobbies? 
like dance. I was on Model UN. I was very into to Model United Nations. Like awesome. drama club. Um, I was in like a something called International Baccalaureate, which is like kind of like advanced placement classes, but like in its own sort of sector, I guess. It's so you have the same curriculum as someone in China, as someone in Australia. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Um but I was big into learning, and so I was. I wish I was into fashion. I wish I did all that stuff. Like I would, I would have much more knowledge and like the ability to do my makeup now if I knew how to do it then and things like that. But I never. It was never a family thing to like go shopping, and I wish it was. You don't need it. Like you have everything that you need. You're yeah. Very put together. Oh, I agree. Yeah. You turned out pretty good. Oh, yeah. I think. <laughs> Thanks, opinion. kid. <laughs> You're doing just fine. Thanks, kid. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, I do love them. Oh. I have a number. It's okay. I'm going to talk work later. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that pesky job. <laughs> um, Where are you working now? Mm. Right now I work at a restaurant. Um, but word on the street. I don't even know if I should say it. But I heard they're shutting down. So that's been a thing as of late. But I'm actually, I've talked to you a little bit about it. I'm kind of glad. I think it's the right time. Because ever since I moved to L.A., I've been pursuing acting or theater or comedy. And I always had, like, a fallback job at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't put as much effort as I could have into it. Of course, I did my classes. Of course, I did my improv shows and all that stuff. But I always was like, oh, but I can rely on this other thing. And I'm kind of excited to at least take the rest of the year to, like, go really hard into this thing. Like, thankfully, I have enough savings to be able to do that. Um, But it feels really cool. It feels scary and uh, exciting, and I'm definitely unsure. But it feels like a cool step to just, like, do the thing that you said you were going to do, you know? I think I told you this, but I've had um, friends and clients that... Same story, you know, moved here from Midwest Mm -hmm. or whatever, and they've always had a serving job or bartender or whatever, and they've been pursuing acting, and it's kind of holds them back from really going. You're not all in, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, you're not all in, and I'm excited. I mean... And as soon as... um, I'm thinking of one particular friend, but as soon as she quit her little cush job, like, her acting job started rolling in because... She kind of opened the door and they'd wait for it, right? Like they're. I mean, that's not to say not having, don't have a second job. It's not to say like, oh, yeah, be in debt. Like, no, you should just be in debt and do this thing <laughs> yeah. that you love. Like, not saying that at all. But <laughs> you know what's dumb? Going to work. You yeah, just that. just don't do anything. <laughs> um, but I worked really hard to be able to have the savings that I have yeah. to do this. So it's not like I'm taking out loans or whatever it is and if they're closing down you get fun employment right so which is about 2k a month right so you have that cush and then technically you're unemployed you can get food stamps if mm-hmm. you want to like play yeah. ball yeah <laughs> yeah it's if true. you want to play ball and it's, it's like true <laughs> there's like the, i think the punk kid in me is like fuck la yeah <laughs> like you don't yeah. get like Get that unemployment. Get be that an work. artist. Just be an, be an artist. Too. Yeah. Because, like, I think in Wyoming, it was, like, I was anti. Because, you know, Wyoming was, sure. you know, very much, like, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. And I always was lucky. Like, I bartended, so I made, you know, good money sure. in Wyoming yeah. for Wyoming. and But now I'm just, like. I will take everything I can get. Yeah. All that help I declined all those years. Like, yeah. If I'm laid off in between TV shows, I am definitely on unemployment. And there's nothing wrong with that because you yeah. work hard. That's well, crazy. also, it's like, yeah. I think what a lot of writers do, too, is like, in between when they're on hiatus, take that unemployment because technically you're laid off until the next season. Mm-hmm. Um, but how do you... I'm having a hard time accepting help, I'll tell you that, like, yeah. when I need it. Do. What, do you feel that way? Women, I guess people too. I don't think it's exclusive to women, but um, Mm -hmm. I think just knowing personally, like I'm very prideful, like Mm -hmm. I want pride and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't, it's very, it was very hard for me to be like, I need help. And then I started accepting that I did in Mm -hmm. certain areas and I was shocked by how much people wanted to help me. Mm-hmm. I was just talking to a client last night about that. I was actually talking about this project. Really? And I was going to say, I know I've been talking about doing like a podcast and I want to pursue this. And um, 
anyways, they were just saying that, um, ask for help. Like, and then she used the example, how do you feel when someone tells you, hey, I would just love to be a hairstylist like you. I'm like thrilled to help mm-hmm. them. I'm like, you can use me as a reference. Oh, as a reference. Yeah. You can assist me. You can this and that. I recommend going to this school, not that school. Like I lay yeah. everything out for them. And it's almost a pleasure. It's kind of like being a concierge or something. Like it's a pleasure to share yeah. references and stuff. And like this is what I've learned. It took me a lot of time. Yeah. A lot of time. Let me share with you. Yeah. It so, gives me it's kind of humbling yeah. a little bit to ask for help. But there's so much strength in admitting you're weak. There's so much strength in asking for help. Yeah, and it invites if you're like, you know, I really don't, like, you know, there were so many times, mm, let me think of an example that directly applies to you. I, my hair's blonde. I had trouble getting it white blonde. Mm -hmm. Like, I could have gone on the internet and looked and messed it up. (laughs) Or, you know, Beth's like, well, if you need a touch up at home, like, this is what I would recommend. Bam. Guess what? White blonde hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and people stop me everywhere about the toner. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if that's a good example, but it was like I could have. Mm-hmm. I've had orange hair before. Mm-hmm. That's seen right when I've done it. So it's like I don't know, like saving. And before that, for years, when we first moved to LA, we would actually trade because she has a massage background. Mm-hmm. And I have like I'm like toe up from the flow up. Yeah. So she would do massage, and I would trade Love her that. and do her hair. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's great. She's so busy now producing and stuff. Like, you just got to do your hair at midnight by yourself. Yeah. There's a toner you should buy. <laughs> and, and to, yeah. And Good luck. She, I hope it doesn't melt off. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, I use, and she tells me, like, Is it well, Wella? Uh, yeah. I, I, I use it from Sally's. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, uh, if that has time, she'll pick me up a toner from, uh, you know, oh, she's yeah, at the yeah, store. Yeah. But we don't the talk about it. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to, like, spill the secrets. I was yeah. like, should I even talk about the hair? Like, I was like, Nate, that's not the good example, but... <laughs> No, that's a great example. I still am finding it hard to ask for help because it's like, like my my boyfriend who I live with. I call him my partner now. Is that weird <laughs> to call someone your partner? I like it because I, I don't like know if I want to get married, but I do know that this is my like. No, partner. the best thing about it is it keeps people <laughs> guessing on what your sexual. I know it does. Is. <laughs> it does. I always wonder when people Michelle say Pfeiffer that. says it. So why can't I? That's my motto. Michelle Pfeiffer says partner. No, she says companion. <laughs> my companion. Because they've been, they're not married, right. but they've been together for years and years and years. Can you please start calling him your emotional companion? Yeah, yeah. Really is that too? I have a weighted blanket and I have Casey Faye. Those are the two. <laughs> Those are how my anxiety. Wait, you have a thunder blanket? A, the weighted blanket. What's a thunder blanket? Yeah, what is a thunder okay, blanket? Okay, I think a thunder blanket is a thing. Is a weighted a blanket? You put it on a dog when it's stressed? Yeah, that's what I have for a human. Yes. <laughs> I am basically your anxiety. The dog that's scared of fireworks, that's me. Oh All my the time. God, I love it. Um, you know what Josia just did like a social experiment on a while back? Oh, no. She did like um, a cuddling service. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I was Sign me up. cracking I'm up. Yeah, tell us tell us about your oh, cuddling service. Yes. Okay. So first of all, everybody should do a cuddling service. If you haven't, please do. I went <laughs> I went in and I'm like, what is this stuff? And yeah. I go in and you know it's in her room. So it's like it's Wait, good. why did you let's take a step back. Why did you decide to do this? What made you be like, I'm going to do this cuddling service? I feel like I have this tendency that I never would have ever imagined myself developing as a kid. But, like, I am so busy and I keep myself going so much that I, someone who's very open to people normally, I do not interact with people besides, like, friends or, like, you know. But I don't hug people anymore. I used to be so touchy-feely. And I just, that, I don't know if it's L.A., just took it away from me Mm -hmm. or... How that changed? Sure. But I, like you're uncomfortable with physical touch now. A little bit. It's like that I, cuddling companion might be an issue. Right. It was like, well, maybe it's because I work in a corporate environment where yeah. you have to be like, hey, I'm standing ten feet away from right, you. Right. 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 Yeah. Maybe I'm afraid <laughs> totally. of like, yeah. Harvey Weinstein busting out of the closet. Yeah. I don't know. Like, no, I really just meant you look nice. Yeah. 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 It's like I'm, I'm not trying to cheat on my wife with you. Exactly. Yeah. Or that's another thing. Like. Uh, there's like weird dynamics like you can give somebody a hug and then all this i had a friend comedian friend i'm not attracted to this guy at all and we were buddies and he gets this girlfriend and like i this girl had energy of like i'm controlling and jealous but like so what i wasn't judging her Mm. i meet 
I see them out. I'm like, hey, Michael. And he like, he, what did he say? He was like, oh, this is my casual friend, Josiah. Like he was like saying oh, those words. Oh my God, that's so funny. I want to do an improv scene off of this, like right now. <laughs> my casual friend, Josiah. Like just labeling everybody. This that's is my so friend who funny. I've never slept with ever. He's yeah. <laughs> and this is Bill. Everybody. I did suck his dick, but it was only once. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly. And it was like, I've never, and I'm like sitting there like what? And he's like, yeah, how long has it been since I've seen you? He's like, Eight but nine. How months? funny! And he's just like distancing, and then she's just like. But the whole time she's like, mm, like and I'm like, how funny! Whoa, man! And so I'm just like, and that type of stuff is off putting to me. So I'm like, okay, I'm just, I don't know what to do. So long story short, I'm just uh, like, I need to cuddle with people. And what <laughs> <laughs> makes up the story is Josie needs a, a damn snuggle I need right to now. Snuggle with people because LA is too weird. And so I went into this therapy room. Which is like... How did you find a snuggle ther- therapist? Or what's it called? She is an app. a... No. Please tell me it's an app. No. She's a... It should be. She's a stand-up comedian. <laughs> okay. And a feminist writer oh, cool. kind of person in town. And she like had been putting on her Facebook, like, I'm now a cuddle therapist. I'm like, what is... <laughs> I just love her so much. What is the cuddle? She's, so much. she's telling me yeah. about it. Yeah. And she was offering a deal half off because of the Me Too movement. Uh-huh. Where she's like, people need touch more than ever. Okay. In a good way. And yeah. I'm like... All right, I'm going to you. And yeah. so, like, I go in there and I'm kind of nervous. And I melted within like two seconds. Like, two seconds. Sobbing? Are you crying? At no. This point? Just oh, like, no. Mm. <laughs> just oh, okay. like, she was like, okay, so what I'm going to do like, is. You're a baby puppy. Yeah, she was like, she did the mama bear hug. There were all these poses, these cool moves. And there was Panda, which was kind of the funniest. So, I'm like live streaming it as we're doing it. And I'm on my stomach. And she, like, lays on my back, like, in a little, <laughs> you know how a little foot, like, curls up in his uh-huh. mom's, like, on, in his mom's yes. back roll? <laughs> like, I feel like that's what she did. She, like, curls up. And then, like, yeah, we just, like, live streamed it. And I'm like, I look like a panda. <laughs> like, it was just so I cute. I love this. And it was so, like, non-sexual. It was yeah. fun. I felt completely safe. And the oxytocin? Sure. Like, was releasing. Like, I left being like, oh, I could run a marathon. Yeah. It was great. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, if it was a guy, would I have been able to? I don't know. Probably not. I would have been like, what's he doing? Yeah. You know who doesn't need cuddle therapy? New moms. (laughs) Have you guys ever heard of being touched out? No. Yeah, that's a thing. We should probably close this soon because you guys got to go. And we've been at it for 40 minutes, I think. But um, being touched out is when you're nursing and your baby's on you all the time and like you don't want anyone else touching you like you just want to like have nothing no one touching you wow which i get kind of yeah yeah you know you finally get your baby to sleep and you finally are like i'm gonna go take a shower and your husband or whoever comes up and like wants to snuggle and you're just like get away from me like let me just live in my skin in solitude for a minute i mean i do that and i don't have a husband or a baby yeah so (laughs) that's a real thing that's why i have that weighted blanket i feel like divorcees really need snuggle therapy and new moms do not need snuggle therapy (laughs) they need like they need pedicures (laughs) (laughs) pedicures different um yeah dude i don't want like thinking about being a mom, I just go to like this place. I'm like, oh, so much responsibility. Remember when you were not a mom? Kind of. Yeah, yeah. I, know. I don't really remember <laughs> I either. I always think to myself, like, why was I so tired back then? Yeah, like, you're like, I'm my, tired now. Yeah. yeah. When my clients come in and they're like, oh, I'm good. I'm just really tired. I'm like, oh, well, I slept five minutes last night. Yeah. Why are you tired? Yeah. <laughs> not to be so like crappy about people being tired that don't have kids but I just Ryan and I look back at our lives before Bowie and we're just like wait um why were we so exhausted just from working like working is tiring but then when you're off work you're really off right you're doing whatever you want whether that's right laying in your bed watching Netflix Mm -hmm. or meeting friends for happy hour and but you don't know what you don't know and so it's like now that you have the perspective it's like yeah, if I get stressed after work, I catch my, I, I'm working on catching myself and being like, I can be delighted because right now I am living the life I'm choosing to live. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a delight. And so I remind myself of that when I'm stacked with meetings. I'm like, I chose this. I wanted this. Right. You know, little me, like in my bedroom, dreamt of having this kind of a calendar. So love yeah. it while you're doing it because it's not going to last, you know, like 
Yeah. Maybe I will be a parent someday. It's and then true. I'm going to be like, oh, great. All this. So, I don't know. There's such a nice balance to find between busy and bored. Yeah. It's really hard to find. No one's ever one or... No one's ever not one or the other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. You're either like, oh, I'm waiting for the next job. Like, I'm depressed. I I haven't gone out. I'm broke. I'm this. I'm that. Whatever. Yeah. And you're just like in a state of boredom where the only thing for you to do is your freaking laundry and clean your house. Or you're like run ragged so busy. Mm-hmm. And when you're... I was just saying to someone, you know what moms never say is I'm bored. They never say I'm bored and they never say I'm lonely. Yeah. Because you have someone with you all the time. It's, granted, it's very different than like what we're doing right now. It's not right. a girl chat. But still. But you're very not alone. Yeah, ever. Ever. But just like people come home to like a pet that makes them not feel lonely. It's like hmm. the same thing, but very magnified. Because there's so much more interaction, you know. Yeah. I get I'd love to have a kid, but just, I don't think I'm, I'm not ready. Yet. Like your dog never introduces you. Yeah. <laughs> at the post office. <laughs> Mom. Mommy. Mommy. My mommy. My daddy. My mommy. My daddy. My best friend has four kids, and she lived with me in high school. She was pregnant in high school, and I don't know. She, she's also a mom that, like, she vowed. She vowed. She's like, I'm not going to be someone that talks about my kids all the time. And so she really hasn't changed that much. How? How do you not? It's all you're doing all the time. I don't know how she does it. It's like she keeps it. Um, it, it, it it's almost a mystery to me how she has done it because it's four kids. Now one of them is friggin' 14, 13 or 14. Like they're in wrestling. Like, you know, these yeah. girls are in wrestling and like doing all this stuff. But it's, she will sometimes, like especially if I ask, I'm like, how are the kids? And then she'll say, well, you know, Tila's, you know, mm-hmm. getting some good grades and, you know, da da da. You know, like she'll she'll open it, but I don't know. I, I'm, I told her, I'm like, if I ever have kids, I'm going to be on the line with you all the time. She's like, you know, you just figure it out. Like, you know, it's not the end of the world. Like, nothing really is. And she said she yells more now, cause she, <laughs> which shocks me because she was like the nicest, never yelled. Yeah, she's, no, it's yeah, true. she was no, yeah. And I'm like, I have so many friends here who are so judgy who are like, I would never yell at my partner or at my kids. I'm like, and Nicole oh, goes, tell them to just wait. <laughs> them to just wait. <laughs> you kind of have to yell at your kids. They're so, constantly putting themselves in danger or making like really devastating messes. And they don't just listen to you. You can't just be like, hey, Bowie, honey, could you stop doing that? And they're like, oh, okay. They you don't got it, mom. Means. Thumbs up. Yeah. She just keeps doing it. You're like, Bowie, Bowie, Bowie. Bowie, Bowie, stop that. And you're, you know, yeah. you're just always in a frantic state of, like, your, you have, like, voice reflexes. You're like, ah, don't do that. Yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Like, you're That's doing helpful. all these, like, noises all the time. But they know what that means. They yeah. They know what it means. And it's, like, if you, even if you check somebody at work, if you're, like, it's like somebody messed something up and you go over very gently and you're, like, hey, you know, just try to, um, you know, refill the, the printer next time. Like, they're probably not going to... You know, I don't know. And, and if they keep doing it and keep messing, then you can be like, hey, fucking fill up the print. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, whoa, okay. <laughs> like, they're not going to forget it. Like, yeah, right. there's a reason for that type of a stern. Yeah, it's true. I have a hard time being stern. Mm-hmm. I do. Yeah. Even with my broker, <laughs> the lovely Cindy, she was like, oh, she's like, do you want dental coverage? And I was like, mm, no. And then a minute later, I was like, actually, maybe I do want it. And she's like, well, I already, I already hit no, so I'd have to call whoever it is to get it. I'll change it tomorrow. And I was like, oh, no, I mean, if it's, like, a big deal for you, like, don't do it. Like, it's totally fine. And she's right. like, um, my, it's my job. Like, don't feel bad about me doing this job. Right. But it's like I'm constantly apologizing or, like, feeling bad, like, if I – make a declaration or you know say I'm, please do this or whatever it is and then I'm like oh sorry sorry I'm that's my thing right now is I'm trying to apologize less yes and they don't know where it comes from I mean kind of know where it comes from um, <laughs> let's be real uh, but I'm trying to like I've had enough counseling yeah go to therapy from. every week okay I know where it comes <laughs> from um but I try to like catch myself and like change my verbiage to something yeah. different that's not like I'm sorry Totally. Which is hard. It's yeah. very hard. Yeah. It's tricky I'm for a, me. I'm definitely over-apologetic. Me too. I got it from my mother. She's like that. Mm-hmm. I remember an assistant said to me, really, like, 
rudely actually once. She's like, why do you say you're sorry so much? She's like, I don't know. Yeah. I just, I mean, I'm in a constant state of like, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Or like, oh, am I in your way? Or yeah, whatever. But we're not. No. You have a right to take up space. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm pretty assertive and I still have those moments that, that programming mm-hmm. like um and people expect you to have it too you turn on your assertiveness though you're not like just a bulldog that's do you know what yeah I mean? it, it's like comes out when it needs to like, yeah I'm really sensitive to power dynamics mm-hmm. and if I'm being yeah like it'll, it'll yeah. like uh, like it'll come right out yeah but I think um no I want to be a gentle I am a gentle sensitive person and I think most women are but yeah there's still that kind of societal undertone of like it's so weird that for women you have to find this balance between both I think about that so much yeah me too. raising a daughter I think about how I was just raised to be sweet right I wasn't raised to be strong nothing against my parents but I went into the world just like oh be nice be nice mm-hmm. and that's just how I was raised and that's just kind of how I am and then, but the older you get, the realize you realize you have to stick up for yourself. And that actually starts really young. You have to start sticking up for yourself, you know, in elementary school. If someone totally. picks on you or whatever. And I just never developed that. Mm-hmm. I didn't ever know how to, um, like, stand up for myself. I didn't know how to be strong. And I feel like it's so crappy that if a woman is assertive, she's... A bitch, right? Right. And but if but if you're not assertive, then you're a pushover. Like, where is the balance? And and we're all in this constant state of trying to find that. And everything from your coworkers to the guy in traffic to all the time, you know, the waitress or whatever at the restaurant that's like being rude to you, and or your kids trying to get their attention. Like, no, I'm sweet and loving, but like seriously, <laughs> get back yeah. here, whatever. Yeah, but I must say, I do at least. For me, I do love my sensitive quality. Like, I would, I, I am actively trying to be a stronger woman. But at the same time, I want, I don't want to lose my empathy because that's something I really love about myself. Yeah, yeah. and it's and you shouldn't. Yeah, you know. So uh, there's space for both things. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, but I, I just, I have to say, I do love my sem- sense of empathy, and it's served me well. Um, both in like acting or whatever it is or comedy or in my personal life I think we should all have a little more empathy that's how I totally totally change the world yeah. totally I, I do think that I've I've just tried to catch myself um, if someone at work is like oh that lady's a bitch or sure. whatever I I nip it right away good yeah like my current supervisor uh, oh, you know, oh, she's crazy. Oh, she's sure. you know, gonna kill all. And, I'm like, and you like, I, I just had a fucking conversation with this lady. She is logical. She is no bullshit. I respect her. I hope that I can one day articulate myself the way this woman does. Mm-hmm. Right. She's plenty kind. It doesn't mean, and then he's like, oh, she gets really emotional. I'm like, you're being emotional right now by you having mm-hmm. this conversation and talking shit about somebody. You're not in control of your emotions. That's what mm-hmm. I'm thinking about. And men are emotional. <laughs> it's funny that women are pegged emotional, and but never emotional. men. Mm-hmm. Haven't you ever noticed that? No one ever calls a man emotional. Mm-hmm. Let me just tell you, they are. Much more. Like, the men in my family are very emotional. My husband's very emotional. Yeah. It's just weird <clears throat> that, you know, I like know. They get their feelings hurt. They yeah. get upset. But they don't know what's happening. They don't uh-huh. know. Like, that's the weird thing is they can't, re- they don't recognize the, some men don't recognize the function of what's going on. Mm-hmm. There's another guy I work with who's great. Like, he's fantastic. He is balanced and sensitive and thoughtful and everything you'd want a coworker to be. And he doesn't talk that way about, mm-hmm. you know, anybody. Like, he doesn't take these personal attacks. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, but I hear women doing the same thing. So I don't know if it's gender specific. Mm-hmm. Like, if someone's going to talk that way, they typically come from a family that it's okay to talk that way. Like, I don't think it would just be the girl in the family that talks the way or the boy. Like, I think it probably is a dynamic. Hmm. Um, I was just talking to my sister when I was up visiting her last week um, about how your family totally rears you into 
how docile or aggressive of a person you need to be in the world. Because mm-hmm. yeah. if you were raised in a big family where you're like fighting for your own popsicle oh. and like whatever the case is, you feel like you have to be more aggressive. And in our case, we have two brothers. Yeah. And like there are definitely things that we have like PTSD. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we're like, yeah, well, when my brother would do this and like we're just girls and we couldn't, mm-hmm. whatever. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I would say, like, my little brother probably has PTSD because there were two older sisters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so we were, same, like, same. <laughs> we're older than you. Like, we're going to yeah. beat you up. So he probably, like, will have issues in marriage with, like, a bossy woman. <laughs> like, is. like if his wife tells him, like, oh, and could you pick up dish soap? He's going to be like, stop bossing me around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You're micromanaging me. <laughs> yeah. He dated really controlling women for a long time. <laughs> and I was like, how funny. Oh, no. What have we done? Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> what have we done? No, he's with somebody that's nice. So, because at nice first, balance. yeah, I didn't yeah. like his girlfriends for so long, and I realized, oh, he's dating the same girl, just different person. Right. Yeah, I see. I need to not hate all of his girlfriends until he's out of this phase, <laughs> and he's out. He's out. Yeah. yeah. Well, ladies, I think we have to close. All right, because I have to set you free. <laughs> Well, this has been lovely. It really has. I'm so glad you girls came over. Um, in closing, what do we have to say? I don't know. Be I liked ass- your delight be, conversation. Be assertive. Yeah. yeah. And, and delighted. And, and delighted. delighted. I yeah. love that. You I are enough. That. All right. I suppose that's all. Yeah. That's what I'm working on. Oh, yeah. if you want to follow Josia and Rebecca Robertson on Instagram or anything else. What's your handle? Rebecca Lee Rob. Josia, J O S I A, Elliot, E L L I O T T. Yes, and they are a swing good time. We'll do more with these two. They're delightful. Word of the day. All right. Bye.